Atelier Champs and oh yes, it's a uh, sloppy turned into a solid state. Um, Lenovo have announced two laptops I think you're going to want to know about and one of them is like, whoa, I'm eyeing off that thing because oof, that ThinkPad X1 Nano has so many things done right. I'll talk about that in a sec. I actually have two Lenovo's in the house at the moment. Yes, two. Of course, I'll be reviewing these in both AMD power, okay? And we have the 4800U in the Legion 5 and in the Slim 7, the Slim Gym, which is basically like a yoga, that has the 4800U. So the 4800H versus U, you're going to see the actual difference between those CPUs. They're both the same CPU, 115 watts, 145 watts. You're going to see with your own eyes which one's faster. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to actually have a look at that. And a quick look at those laptops by here. Yeah. But have a look at these things here. We'll first get into the fold, okay? Seems to be fold is the thing these days with the mobile phones and all that sort of things. And now laptops, right? I'm not actually sold on these things, but this thing looks really good. It's actually quite interesting, this thing. Key points here, it's 2.2 pounds or oh, one kilo. Amazing. 13 inch display, 13.3 inch display, foldable display, OLED 4x3. Now there's only one thing better than 16x10 and that's 4x3 and this is 4x3. When you open it up, that's 2048 by 1536, 300 nit display, 95% DCI-P3, so wide color gamut there and Dolby Vision capable, so it'll be great for viewing content. Only up to eight gigs of RAM because this is an ultra portable device. Device. So this is more like a phone sort of thing. It's like the Surface Duo or you know maybe a Galaxy Fold or whatever. It's that type of product. It does have Intel's 11th gen CPUs, but it's their hybrid processor, which is basically Intel's take on a mobile CPU. It has you know high efficiency cores and low powered cores. So it's got big and little. It's not like your traditional i3, i5, whatever. It's more like a mobile CPU. Anyway, that's quite interesting. Let me know if you want me to get that thing in. But for me, this is the one I'm interested in. Wolf Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. Oh, and I did forget to mention on that fold, yes, it's 5G connectivity, sub 6 gigahertz, etc. You saw it on the spec sheet anyway. This thing, same thing. This is 5G as well. I'll get to that in a sec. But this thing here is less than one kilos. It's like two pounds. Can you believe that? It is a 13 inch laptop. Not only that, 16 by 10, wolf. The only thing that stops me buying a ThinkPad as an Ultrabook is 16 by nine display. I want 16 by 10. 16 by nine is great for gaming. It's actually good for viewing content and stuff like that. Let's get into the specs of this thing here. There are key points there, better views, better display. I'll talk about the display in a sec because something important about that display. You know, you get all the security features. If, you know, business people know about ThinkPads, the best keyboards, all the security features, privacy shutter, fingerprint. Business people use ThinkPads because they're secure. Now let's get into the specs here and why this is so good. Yes, it's light, two pounds, 907 grams, wow. It has Intel's latest 11th generation CPUs, Tiger Lake. So you get the XE graphics. So this is gonna perform great quad core 15 watt parts. And I'll just tell you something about this. I don't wanna make this sort of like an esoteric sort of video, but basically a CPU has two power limits. PL1, PL2, basically it's a boost state and a steady state. Now usually they go down to say 15 watts in this case. That'll be its steady state after a long run. It'll settle down to 15 watts and it'll boost up to whatever, 40 watts. With these 11th gen CPUs, you can have a dynamic steady state and boost. Now the manufacturer has to actually implement this, but for example, if they implement it into this, they can let it boost up to 45 watts, 50 watts. Yeah, they can do that now. Lenovo are a little bit conservative, but anyway, 11th gen CPUs, awesome. This is an Evo laptop, so you know what Evo means. You get the best, you have to meet a certain criteria for battery life, you get Thunderbolt 4, you know, the way it can resume has to work properly, which a lot of Windows laptops, it doesn't. You know, best connectivity, Wi-Fi 6, 
This one has 5G as well. It actually says LTE 5G Cat 20. It doesn't actually say sub 6 gigahertz there where the other one did, the Fold. So I don't know, but it's got Wi-Fi 6, AX. It's just a connectivity beast here. 65 watts up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is perfectly fine when you're talking about something so thin and light and portable. And this is what I want. I want something in between a 15, 16, 17 inch laptop and my phone. Now, a lot of people use an iPad or something in between, I want something in between and that's either going to be an XPS 13 it's going to be maybe one of these the Nano because this is super light like and it's got 16 by 10 display now or it might be a MacBook with the Apple Silicon we'll see but it looks like it's got great battery life 48 watt hour battery 17.3 hours battery life it has to have at least 9 hours battery life to be considered Evo it doesn't say anything about PCI Express 4 which 11th gen CPUs can have but here's the thing about this display I love what they're doing with the display not only is it 16 by 10 so we have a look at the resolution 2160 1350 450 nit you can get it with touch or without touch 100% sRGB perfect nice brightness 100% sRGB that is good but what I like about this is they've gone straight in the middle for the sweet spot no 4k battery life killer which on a 13 inch really it's actually debatable whether 4K is any good on a 15 or 17 inch. Well, 17 I think is worth it. But on a 13 inch, this is perfection, right? It's not 1080p, some higher resolution than that, but it's not 4K battery killer. So it should be somewhere in between. And, you know, they're quoting 17 hours battery life, all the connectivity you get, the security, the best keyboards. This thing is amazing. It looks amazing on paper. Cannot wait to get this in the house. It looks really good. Now, the design and style of these, um, yeah, well, you know, my girlfriend, she doesn't, <laughs> she hates these things. I love think pads i got a soft spot for them and yeah a bit of nostalgia there but um they're cool in my book some people they don't like the look of them they look too business sort of i don't know boring or whatever people say but they are premium they're tough they last forever they're good laptops so let's have a look at these two laptops all right so here we have two laptops from lenovo the legion 5 with the ryzen 4 800h this one here is the yoga slim 7 and this is amd 4800h U, not H, so that's H, that's U. Same CPU, 8 cores, 16 threads on both of them, but this one is 15 watts, this one is 45 watts. We're going to see the difference between the two. Now, full HD display. Actually, this is branded yoga, but it doesn't do the gymnastics that you would expect a yoga would do. You know, Ryzen, you know, GPU, the integrated GPU. This one has the 1650, um, so yeah, 8 gigabytes of RAM here. Now they both have all the ports you want and that's a 1080p display there, 120Hz and this is 1080p as well. They both have all the ports you want except Thunderbolt 3, AMD systems, we haven't seen Thunderbolt 3 on them yet. But I want to see the difference between a 45 watt 4800H and a 4800U part. I want to see the difference and not just a benchmark score difference, I want to actually literally see what the difference is. Oh, all right, so there we go. We're running Cinebench on both of them. So remember, the left one has 45 watts, the right one has 15 watts. Now, they're both literally the same CPU, other than this would probably have better performance per watt. Obviously, it's 15 watts, so probably better binned. But as you can see there, it doesn't look like much difference there. And in actual fact, this thing here is a U part. It's for Ultrabooks. And it actually spits out a Cinebench score, you know, akin to a i9, like a 10980HK. Yes, or a 9980HK. I'm trying to remember all these numbers, it's crazy. I can hear that one. That one I can't hear. Obviously, this one can pump a lot more watts into it. It's a gaming system, right? This one here is going to be limited to whatever, 45 watts. has a 65 watt brick, but... It's not going to use that much. It's probably only use 30 watts, 35 watts max. This one here is probably be able to boost around 60 and it will go back down to 45 or whatever. But as you can see there, boom, we finish here. What are we getting? 4,600. Wow, that is just nuts, right? Intel RIP because even the i9s, the 10th generation i9s, they're not getting a score like that unless they're heavily overclocked. And look, is it that far behind really? All right, the score is 3,669 versus 4,610. 
Not that much difference when you consider that this uses much less power. And that score there, the 3669, really, an Intel i9 will probably do that stock. Like, if you would have to overclock an i9, a 45 watt i9 to beat this. Yeah, because stock is virtually no difference. So anyway, quick look at these two. Catch you next one, guys. Stay tuned for the review of these. Tally ho.